Cursing me every day. So Ben, look, we, we've, we've had a bit of a conversation previously and um, I'm hoping I can keep it on track actually because there's so much I'd love to actually ask you. Um, and we've had a number of meetings about other things that have turned into meetings about whatever, whatever we find ourselves talking about. Look, just, just to kick us off, can you just tell us, I guess, who you are and uh, what is your relationship to the finance community? Uh, sure. Look, I'm, a, I'm originally from Toronto, Canada. I've been in Australia for about 15 years and I've spent uh, about 25 years in digital advertising and marketing, mostly through uh, specialist digital agencies and as head of digital for some of the large multinationals like Clevenger B Video. Um, most of my clients, uh, I facilitate uh, consumer centric design. So what that means in plain English is that I design solutions uh, for businesses to solve their problems, uh, interfacing with consumers and backend systems through technology. Um, and my teaching has been largely around uh, in the master's program at Swinburne, teaching around social media analytics and social media management. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Because um, my next question was, and that's a bit of a cheeky one, but what was your qualifications or experience to be able to talk to this topic today? Uh, well, look, uh, largely um, be because of my uh, experience across a wide variety of industries uh, through the advertising space, um, I, I recognize that uh, digital can play a role in pretty much any industry. And my frustrations in applying for a mortgage specifically uh, led me, led, sort of led me down the path of creating a solution that would um, facilitate a lot of the issues or address a lot of the issues that consumers have in, um, in negotiating the finance space specifically. Mm -hmm. um, I have had a lot of experience in the finance space uh, going back about 20 years when I started work uh, doing some consulting work for, for GE Money. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, my experience primarily is in the technology space and um, in the data space specifically. So, um, you know, understanding how to leverage technology solutions and build solutions for consumers, in this case, by addressing uh, a large broker problem is what led me to, to starting De Niro. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. And, and I guess, you know, and, and I, know, I know a little bit about, I guess, some of your beliefs of where things could go, what could happen. But um, I guess for the, for the rest of the room, I'd love to hear just, the, your, your take on where all this could go and where we could end up. And look, you're allowed to be wrong. Um, it's great to speculate about some of these things, but I'd love to, I guess, hear from you what you see the future looking like, especially in our industry. Sure. Look, I would, I think, you know, speculation is exactly what it, what it, it largely is. Um, I would say that um, as we continue to move forward, the native digital, so the people who have grown up with, with digital surrounding their lives is becoming more and more of a mainstay and technology solutions being used by a variety of industries to interface between their industry and, uh, and the consumers is an inevitability. Um, what, where, I, um, where I have frustration is around the artificial intelligence solutions that wow. remove the human equation. Um, I've been a strong advocate for consumer centric design, which means um, building systems around the consumer that help them achieve their goals. And I, I don't believe that an AI solution is necessarily going to be uh, of, of benefit to consumers, largely because their financial literacy um, just doesn't uh, stack up to a professional. They have other things in their lives that they're focusing on, and uh, the advocacy of a professional to negotiate that lending space is always going to be better for that consumer. Um, AI lacks the context, but that being said, I suspect um, that the future of, of digital involvement in the lending community is by building systems that help bridge the gap between consumers and brokers and to streamline the process, to make this, the process simpler. And I think open banking is um, an attempt at starting that. Um, open banking largely uh, gives the big banks an advantage. And I think the move that the government has recently announced about opening up discussions on open finance, I think is, is the right path because yeah, so it, it open levels finance, the playing field. Yeah, so open finance is not just the banks getting access to that data, but anyone. 
that anyone right? in the financial space. Yeah, exactly. So that, you know, open banking um, largely excludes um, superannuation or insurance providers. It's specifically de dealing with the banking and lending space specifically. Um, but there's a whole ecosystem of players in the finance space. And I think open finance opens up that capability. Um, the barrier for a lot of these companies is the, simply the overhead cost of infrastructure and regulatory approval um, in all of their systems in order to leverage the open banking um, framework. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I was having a, I was in a room where a conversation was being had recently uh, where they're talking about the rise of digital banks. One of the comments was, well, all banks will eventually be digital. And my, I believed it for about 10 seconds then I remembered my time working at some of the large banks and the inability to cut red tape and get things done. Um, it was quite a, you know, of like it, it will. I think it's a little bit further off than what we might think. But it's, it's a, just a question around the open banking piece. Um, I know we didn't plan to have this conversation, but I think it's it's of interest. Is with banks having access to all this data? Um, at first, we may think it's well, that's a good thing because then we don't, as brokers, have to provide or the, the, I guess, the proof or the evidence of, of that data. But also, what my concern is it also then takes out of our hands the ability to actually present a good story and put context to the data. And you made mention of that a little bit around part of the, the, your concern mm -hmm. with AI is, is it able to give context to that data? Can you just expound on that a little bit more around where businesses can run into trouble by just relying on, I guess, just straight data or AI? Well, look, I think um, you know the traditional lending institutions are largely conservative in their in in the way that they treat borrowers, and that the online lenders tend to give a little bit more flexibility, and they do so um, by looking at the context of a of a consumer's financial situation as well as other key factors. Um, you know, those just the way that that banks, for example, treat sole traders. Um, obviously, being a sole trader, I have. Um, you know, uh, a bit of a bias, but, um, you know, sing, a small business and sole tradership constitutes such a, an extensive percentage of, um, of the market, the business market, and to not allow uh, or to treat sole traders with um, a little bit more disdain in the borrowing process. And I, I use that word carefully. Um, it, it, it's, by opening up the, um, the the financial system to alternate vendors, to alternate uh, borrow well, lenders, it gives a little bit more of a level playing field to um, to all people, mm -hmm. and I think that's that's part of it. I mean, the, the Australian dream is largely built around home ownership, and to provide solutions that that allow people from across the spectrum to be able to borrow and own a home is the ultimate goal that we're trying to achieve. Um, AI is not gonna take that into consideration and neither are banks. So having a, a, you know, a large variety of different lending options is the ultimate solution. And a broker in large part will be able to tell that story of that family or that individual or that, that young couple and, um, and be able to, to assess their specific needs both for now and for their long-term future and provide solutions, um, you know, to, to, to best suit their needs. Well, that's, I guess that's the challenge as a broker or all the, all the skill set that you develop is the ability to understand what the customer actually values. Um, yes. You know, I, I remember just a quick story, I had a, had a couple in front of me once when I was a, when I was a lender and the, her father had left her a property that she didn't want to sell or, um, in order to purchase their brand, their brand new home that they wanted. And the, and the husband's like, well, why can't you just sell the property? You know, well, the value of that property to her was a lot more than, you know, I guess, how much it, it was worth according to evaluation. So it's been, you know, those nuances is where you know, human interaction is important. Um, yeah. That's why I believe that you know, any digital offering in market, it will be competitive, but digital plus broker, will always provide a, a far better experience for the customer. Yeah, and um, I think it'll also open up, um, it'll open up our borders a little bit more. So right. I own, for example, I own, uh, I own property in Canada, but I can't leverage that property here. Um, banks obviously don't want to chase down um, 
international <laughs> delinquencies if that ever was to happen. Sure. But through open banking, that opportunity to leverage, um, you know, foreign property ownership, foreign businesses, foreign income sources uh, will help make lending a little bit more accessible, um, assuming that the framework, you know, uh, is, uh, is adjusted accordingly. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Look, and I guess what the topic we're discussing right now is, you know, I guess the future of customer relationships. Um, can you just tell me a little bit more about, I guess, what you're working on right now? What's grabbed your interest? What's some of the solutions that you see to, I guess, some of the challenges between bridging the gap between, I guess, a digital world brokers and their customers? Well, look, uh, I think that the, um, the, the lending space, a lot of the systems are largely to assist the broker in, uh, in assessing customer's viability and completing a loan application. I think what often happens is that um, that vision is often quite narrow. Um, a lot of people tend to forget the customer at the end of the day. Yeah. And the, the customer problem really in a large part, especially with onboarding and when it comes to long-term customer retention is around the acquisition of consumer financial data. Um, that most consumers will take weeks to supply or collect and supply data um, and in this, in this day and age, I found that to just, it kind of blew my mind a little bit. Uh, and in a large part, that's what De Niro tends to facilitate is the centralization of all financial data, the ability for a consumer to find a broker in their local area or even a national provider, and the ability in one click to be able to share their finances with that, uh, with that financial service provider, either advisor or broker. In the long term, what we are intending to build is notification tools um, that give brokers access to critical information on changes to a customer's financial status. Right. For example, if uh, if you've if you've uh, completed a mortgage for a customer, then you know when is it time for their for their renewal period? Um, what changes are, for example, if they're going to save for an income property? What kind of equity have they have they developed in that property? And how can you leverage it to get them into another property? If we can help automate um, by delivery of emails to the broker to give them the access to the information in a proactive fashion, then they can engage their customer, build a stronger relationship. So they don't have to worry about that leakage that happens every year. Um, I mean, about $88 million in commissions are up for grabs every year, which is pretty an amazing number. Um, but it also helps the customer build not just you know one single asset for their retirement, but helps to build a portfolio for their retirement, and helps the broker maximize that relationship. Well, look, at, I think most brokers are in a position where they want to have that uh, whole life journey with that customer. It's not about just doing a single transaction. It's about looking after them and their family and their friends for life. And you know, anything that helps facilitate that, especially in a smart way. Look, a lot of, I, I know um, the business that I work in currently, you know, we have some smart tech in regards to, we've worked out when to send a particular communication to hopefully get a response, but it's not, it's, it's still guesswork. It's not, it's not based on true data where, you know, like for me, I'm thinking like you've got data out there that knows exactly what the value of a property is. You've got data that knows exactly how much someone owes on their on their property um, or on their home loan you know exactly how much they have in savings if there's specific goals that you've spoken about with that customer initially that they want to achieve and you as soon as the data points line up you know you, you get notified to give them a call or reach out um, that is that is a very powerful tool which ultimately and this is that you mentioned it already actually um, helps the customer it's about the customer not just the lending process where no, I kind of feel a lot of the, the tech that I'm seeing coming out within our industry is really about trying to streamline the, the process between bank and, and broker and not necessarily between just broker and customer. So um, no, that's brilliant. Look, um, I, I, we do have to keep going, otherwise, as I said, we could have talked all day, but um, look, Ben will be hanging around towards the end to answer some questions as well. Um, and I'm sure that you know, we'll pass on your details to everyone um, and you know, Ben also does some great stuff online as well. I, I saw, I joined his, um, he had his own webinar recently around social media and data, which was, which was pretty incredible. Um, so I'll definitely encourage anyone to follow Ben um, and, and get in contact with him.